So over the river here is North Korea. Good morning to the quiet streets of Seoul and I am up early this morning because I'm about to go on a half day tour to the DMZ which is the demilitarized zone of South and North Korea. I feel like this is a day trip that you just have to do when you're in Seoul. It is the closest that you're going to get to North Korea without going in on a tour. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what this is all going to be about. You do have to do a tour to go here. Um, I booked this tour through Get Your Guides with a really good, um, well, well-rated Seoul company. So I'm going to leave the link below to get your guide if I do recommend the trip. So let's go to the DMZ. DMZ North Korea. Flowers are very green with the trees, but there's a kind of bold mountain without trees. The first stop of the tour is Injunuk Park and it only took about 40 minutes to get here. So everything that we can see here is South Korea. Um, all of the countryside is South Korea. We cannot see any of North Korea from here. But the reason that this is a popular place to come and a popular place on all of the tours is that it is the most northern part that people can come without having government access. And so not only do the tours all come here, but a lot of um, Korean families come here because, you know, Korea was one country for thousands and thousands of years. They then split up into North and South, which was only about 70 years ago. And the border just got put there. So a lot of families got involved in the split and a lot of families had to make the decision to leave their homes in North Korea, where they had lived for generations into South Korea. Korea. So a lot of families come here. There's also a memorial for the families that were split as well. There's also the Freedom Bridge which nearly 13,000 soldiers crossed um, after the war. And then finally there is a locomotive train and that was left in the DMZ area after the war and so it was left there for a long time but then finally they did decide that actually it was a really important piece of history so they managed to move it out of the DMZ and it's now held here. We saw the Unification Village. 450 residents still live here. And then now we are in Tora International Station. So this international station was opened in 2002 with the hope of reunification. So if we have uh, permission to travel North Korea, we can go to Pyongyang and other provinces from this international station. But even though we have uh, permission to travel to North Korea in North Korea, but became totally different countries, right? So we have to pass CIQ immigration current like like the airport. So this way you can see immigration facilities in the terminal too. And then uh, we can travel to the European country through China, Russia from this international station. I got some stamps obviously we were warned do not put these stamps in your passport otherwise you're gonna get some have some issues for sure in fact I think actually someone behind me just as I was getting this stamp did actually he did actually do it in his passport I just heard this guy to be like I told you not to put it in your passport so don't know how that what would happen then but so I'm just walking up the hill to the observatory now and um, but my guide was saying that it used to be really noisy around here because there used to be propaganda messages happening from both sides but that actually stopped only last year um, but she was saying that in the north they used to do a lot of propaganda messages and then the south used to do a lot of k-pop so I don't know if that's true or not but I'd like to think it is because that's pretty funny. So over the river here is North Korea.
So this is the top of the observatory and from here we can see the North Korean flagpole and also the South Korean flagpole and our guide told us that, I can't remember which one was built first but say it was North Korea and then South Korea then built it <coughs> theirs and built it higher than North Korea so then North Korea built another one to make it even higher um, but then in the end South Korea just said whatever you have the highest one so North Korea does have the highest flagpole in the world and then South Korea is the second and what we can also see from the top is loads of buildings um, but those aren't actually lived in they are completely fake buildings through the telescope you can see a really really good view and you can see it's really busy up here I actually didn't hold out any hope that I was going to be able to see um, but I did get to use one and wow this the view is incredible and they're also free to use which is really good please problem please stay outside so we're just waiting to watch a video about the Korean War but whilst I remember I'll tell you this now so our guide said that on a Saturday and a Tuesday it can get super super busy here with Chinese tourists so literally four to five thousand people come off a cruise ship and do this tour so today it is Sunday so we've actually missed them she didn't know how busy it was going to be but it's actually not that busy so if you are coming here then try and avoid Tuesdays and Saturdays. June 25th, 1950, the invasion of South Korea by the North began with earth-shattering sounds of artillery. Although North and South Korea established their own governments after World War II, the peace didn't last long. Revealing its ambition to conquer South Korea, North Korea started the Korean War in alliance with the Soviet Union, but turned the entire nation into ruins resulting in over 3.9 million deaths. This war among Koreans was a true tragedy. After three years and one month, the Korean War ended with the Armistice Agreement, signed in Panmunjom on July 27, 1953. It led to the formation of the DMZ around the military demarcation line to prevent the war from starting again. But even after the armistice agreement, North Korea dug underground tunnels below the demarcation line in order to invade South Korea. In addition to the four tunnels already discovered, it is expected that there are many more tunnels that haven't been found. North Korea is provoking us endlessly, using tunnels underground, as well as on land and sea. The DMZ is a paradise for moose, goats, and wild flowers. Chinese geese to eagles, and rare birds such as white cranes, herons, and black-faced spoonbills. The DMZ is a land of life, where wild animals live in harmony. So I am a little bit sweaty because we just went into one of the tunnels, the infiltration tunnels. So the UN, they did some like surveys and they think that there could be over 20 tunnels leading from North Korea into South Korea, but there's only four that have been found. So we went into the third one, which is the biggest and also the most dangerous because, let me get my facts right, um, because it's only, 52 kilometers from Seoul and if they wanted to North Korea could deploy 30,000 soldiers and they could get through there within one hour um, and when it was found obviously that's what the assumption is that they were going to go under there into South Korea so we did get to walk down that third tunnel so we walked all the way down here which was quite a long way and then walked all the way down here which was very very cramped to here and we could just see like a little window which leads into this one which leads into this one which leads into the dmz which leads into north korea 
and it was like a really crazy experience I mean just being underground that low it is 72 meters below the earth um, it did feel a little bit claustrophobic at times and like if you really let yourself think about it it was a little bit scary but it was totally fine um, however if you do suffer from claustrophobia or you kind of can't walk very well because the walk back up the tunnel was quite intense that's why we're so so sweaty um, it is recommended that you don't go down there And something that I've perhaps found most surprising and most unexpected from this tour is that the actual DMZ, which is two kilometers um, the South Korea side and two kilometers on the North Korean side, um, is actually full of nature apparently. So it's full of loads of flowers, it's full of loads of animals and full of loads of birds because no one can get there. So humans are not destroying it. It's just like natural, natural earth, which is, I mean, if there was one thing to good thing to come out of this perhaps maybe that is it so I forgot to finish the vlog yesterday um, but I hope you can tell that I had a really good time on the tour I'm really really glad I did it it is super super touristy loads of people do go but you know I feel like it's kind of witness in history it's not harming anyone um, and yeah it was just interesting I definitely learned a lot about it and that is what travel is all about and as I said I really love the tour that I went with so I'm gonna link that below I booked it through get your guide they picked us up really well the guide was really really amazing so fully recommend that so thanks very much for watching i hope you have liked this if you have please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments and hit subscribe for more travel videos